Hello guys, it's your team plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm testing API, so DirectX 11 versus DirectX 12, also known as the X11 versus the X12. As usual I'll give you a small introduction of what is DirectX, how it works, what is an API and etc etc and after that we'll go into the testing. As for the testing I'm using a Ryzen 5 3600 and an RX 5700 XT, so both AMD. Uh, and for the games we have 6 games tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Apart from Fortnite, since my monitor is natively 1440p ultra wide, Fortnite doesn't um, doesn't let me use the virtual super resolution to enable the 4K, okay? So that's the only game tested at 1440p ultra wide instead of 4K. If you like this kind of videos, don't forget to watch these videos because they are really, really cool. And you know what else is cool? Our sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less, $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key, and to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila, you have an activated system for only $14. So guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot, me and the channel. And let's go to the part you really want to see, the tests. See you in the conclusion. DirectX is a collection of application programming interfaces, the so-called APIs. They serve to handle tasks related to multimedia, especially game and video programming. Originally, the APIs in the collection all started with Direct, for example, Direct 3D, Direct Draw, Direct Music and so on, being the DirectX, like I said before, the collection. Funny enough, when Microsoft decided to create the gaming console, the same X was taken in consideration, and that's how the name Xbox was created. The first DX version was released back in September 1995, while the latest one, the DX12 Ultimate, was announced last month, March 2020. An API basically is what tells the hardware what and how to work with software, meaning that the closer the API is to the metal per se, more efficient it will be since it won't have as many software layers to pass through. Now that you know the basics, let's see how well the DirectX 12 is implemented in nowadays games. There you are, you are here about the job. Janitor's assistant. You need to go to the interview. Go that way to the elevator. Thanks. Elevator that way. Got it. Very good. I'm Ahti. The first game tested today is an addition to our current tests, and it is Control. As we see, this game runs pretty decently with both API implementations. Still, the game was running pretty decently at 1440p and reducing two graphic settings to medium will grant you a boost of around 10 to 15 FPS, with almost no visual downgrade. In terms of API, we don't know if it is the DX11 that it's really well implemented or the DX12 that is badly implemented. Overall, absolutely no difference in this part tested. Although, take in consideration that there are some parts where a small difference may be seen. The second game is the widely played Fortnite, using the replay feature. As interesting as it seems, 
There are a lot of benchmarks on YouTube showing the differences between the X11 and the X12 on Fortnite using AMD hardware, but most of them only show the differences in averages, and we all know that averages don't mean much by themselves. Although the averages are the same, the 1% lows are way lower than with the X11, meaning that you'll feel a bit more frame drops with a newer API. It seems like Epic Games is messing with us, thinking that we are all eating ice cream with our foreheads. <laughs> Moving on. Without spilling over. Oh, what do you want me to do? Tuck you in and get you your teddy? Now come on, get moving. Yeah, and I've approved them with my own special recipe. Right. Now, finally, with Frostbite Engine and some really interesting results. Remember when I said some minutes ago that the average FPS numbers don't mean much by themselves? Yes, Battlefield 5 is the perfect example. In this case, the X11 presents higher average FPS numbers across the board. But look at the 1% lows. They are massively lower than the 1% lows with the X12. The closer the 1% lows are to the average FPS numbers, the smoother the game will feel. So while with the X11 you'll have an average FPS boost, you'll also have a more stuttery gameplay, while with the X12 you'll actually feel an improved gaming experience due to massively higher 1% lows. Now with the Division 2, and damn, more interesting results. The Division 2 uses a new game engine by Ubisoft, and if Ubisoft uses this game engine for the next Assassin's Creed games, the gaming industry would appreciate. At 1080p we see that the X12 1% lows are almost the same as the average FPS with the X11, which is crazy! This is like going from a Vega 56 to an RX 5700 XT in terms of performance. Basically imagine you have a 1080p 144Hz monitor. With the X11 you would have some frame drops to lower 60s, which will be clearly noticeable while gaming and would cut the gaming experience, while with the X12 you would rarely go below 119fps, which is almost a double of what the X11 gives us. Even at 1440p the difference would be from drops to 66 FPS to being stable at over 80. Changing API in this game definitely makes you feel like you bought a new GPU. Moving on. This time with Borderlands 3, another recent game with the X12 implemented. I did a simple running test across the map and even with that, the differences can already be seen. This time they aren't as massive as the ones before of course, but they are decent. We still get an FPS boost across all resolutions being it on averages or 1% lows. I think the biggest difference will be at 4K, because while with the X11 you would have an average of 60 FPS with drops to lower 50s, with the X12 you have the game running at over 60 FPS 99% of times, which will be a game changer in terms of smoothness. Father will kill me if he finds out I went up with you. Twice if he learns we've been to a hunter off limit zone. And well, the last game of today is Metro Exodus. The first thing that you may notice is that one result is missing. Well, yes, but it is missing because I wasn't able to test it at 4K with the X11. While with the X12 it would run around 50 average FPS, 
with the X11 the game wouldn't simply go over the 20, so 22, 24 FPS, making even the main menu a pain in the ass. Obviously, it has some kind of bug, but still, not my fault. Overall, once again we see way better results with the X12, and once again, not on average FPS, but instead on the 1% lows, which are way more relevant than most people think. Let's now move to the conclusion. So guys, the conclusion. What I think and what I took uh, from these tests is basically that what is best overall is the implementation. So imagine if we have a game with a really really good implementation of the X11 and then they port it to the X12 like they did for example on Fortnite, well, most probably that the X12 implementation will suck and the performance will actually be worse than with the X11. So it has a lot to do with, with the implementation of course. As for, for, exa for example Remedy's Control, um, the results are practically the same, I would say literally the same, apart from some parts of the game, yes, because I already finished the game, apart from some parts of the game, the results would be exactly the same. So yeah, it's kind of a, um, how should I say it, it's kind of more of an implementation thing than the proper API. It is a better API overall, overall, it is a better API, but it needs to get proper implementation. Once you get proper implementation of it, for example, you can see games like Borderlands having more FPS, you can see games like Metro Exodus having way more 1% lows, uh, Battlefield 5. so overall these implementations, while decreasing a bit uh, the average FPS numbers, they will increase a lot the 1% lows, and the 1% lows are where the smoothness is, so as close as the 1% lows are to the average FPS numbers, the best. As close they are, the smoother the gameplay will feel. So that's a good thing for the X12. So yeah, basically that's it. It's mostly about the implementation, but obviously there are for example some game engines that take advantage of the higher number of draw calls from the X12, just an example of course. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, yeah, implementation and at the same time how the game is developed what the game is developed to use. For example, if a game is developed to use direct, di DirectX... Yes, Portuguese is also taking over all the times. <laughs> if the game is developed to use DX11, yes, like I said before, the DX12 implementation may suck. And yeah, that, that's basically it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thanks a lot. Seriously, don't forget hit like subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot and leave a comment in the comment section because I want You to tell me what you think about this video and what you think about these results and the X11 and the X12 Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video